Bob Hoopscher, and this is the Gaining Perspective Podcast, where we bring you insightful conversations with some of the top thought leaders in the investment advisor profession and investment management industry. I am the founder of Advisor Perspectives and a vice chairman of Vetify. Saving for college and other educational needs is one of the most pressing financial planning concerns. Investors are looking to their financial advisors for guidance. And in this episode, we're going to look at the role 529 plans play and why they're so important in improving client outcomes and supporting practice management. My guest, Leslie Geller, will be talking about the expanded set of educational expenses that 529 assets can fund, the details of Capital Group's College America Savings Plan, one of the largest in the country with approximately $80 billion in assets under management, as well as how Secure 2.0 has lowered barriers to opening and funding a 529. Leslie is a wealth strategist at Capital Group, the $2.2 trillion asset manager well known for its American funds. A former, former tax attorney, Leslie uses her nearly two decades of experience advising clients on tax and estate planning matters to help advisors achieve better outcomes for the investors they serve. She also supports advisors with practice management. And I should also mention, Leslie has been a guest on this podcast before about, I think, two or three years ago. We talked about how to work with female clients. Uh, And we'll put a link to that podcast in the notes of the company. This one, Uh, Leslie, for those who didn't listen to that previous podcast, tell me a little bit about your career path what led you to join Capital Group and your role there? Thanks so much for having me. And I can't believe, I don't know that anybody's ever used the term almost two decades of experience. (laughs) That makes me feel very old. Um, So I started off my career, as you said, as a tax and estate planning attorney, first in New York for a firm called Cleary Gottlieb, and then out here in Los Angeles for a smaller firm uh, where I was for about eight years. I became a partner, built a nice tax and estate planning practice. Um, And then I was about to have my third daughter and I was presented with this opportunity at Capital Group and being familiar with Capital Group, I knew that I couldn't pass it up, especially as a, a working mother of three. So that was about five years ago, and it's been a very interesting five years, to say the least, as it has for, I'm sure, you and everyone who's listening to this podcast. Um, But what I do all day is speak to advisors, and I speak to them and coach them through anything related to tax, estate planning, family governance, charitable giving, wealth transitions. Um, I talk a lot about tax policy. That's been a big subject over the last few years and how that's impacting the planning conversations. Really anything related to tax policy and planning. So you know, the one of the lemonade out of lemon situations with COVID was that I got to speak to so many more advisors than I otherwise would have because the virtual environment became a viable one as far as communication. So I have spoken to thousands and thousands of advisors over the last few years. Um, And so I have a really holistic perspective of what everyone is doing across firms, across channels, across the country. So it's it's a really great position to be in. And I get to speak to so many interesting, brilliant people along the way, which is what I love. Well, I'm looking forward to having you share that perspective with our listeners and to talk about tax policy as it relates to educational expenses. Let's start with College America. I mentioned that in my introduction. What is it? How long has Capital Group been offering it as a 529 savings account? Yeah, so it was launched in February of 2002, and College America is one of the nation's oldest 529 programs, and it's the largest by assets. Um, It's available in all 50 states. It's advisor sold, and you mentioned this at the beginning with about $80 billion in assets as of the first quarter of this year. It's 
actively managed, as are all of our various investment vehicles and the solutions at Capital Group. And there's no account setup fees. There's no annual account fee charges. Um, and in fact, College America, as with all of our investment solutions, is really among the lowest cost active solutions in the market. Um, at the heart of it, though, it helps millions of families and individuals save for college and other educational experiences. And with the cost of college continuing to go up with inflation, that's an extremely relevant goal right now. Um, the program offers advisors and their clients the chance to decide how they invest with our target date series, our portfolio series, which are our pre-built portfolio portfolios, or there's the custom built portfolio option of individual American funds, which you also mentioned at the outset. Um, anybody can open a College America plan, regardless of how much you earn. And you only need $250 to open an account. Um, and then finally, it's sponsored by Virginia 529, which has been our longstanding state sponsor. That's quite a, uh, an offering. I'm, I'm curious, over the 20 years that it has been around, how has it evolved in terms of the types of funds that it offers or in what, what, any other respect that would be relevant to our audience? There's been a lot of changes over the last two decades. They were originally created to encourage and help families to save for the rising cost of education expenses. But they're really no longer exclusive to traditional four-year colleges. And I think we're going to see that trend continue and become more prominent in the coming years. So for vocational schools, trade programs, there's so much conversation around that, right? The utility of a four-year college versus some type of career-specific training. 529s like College America can still pay for that. Those vocational schools are trade programs. They can also be used to fund room and board, books, supplies, Wi-Fi, all of those expenses attendant to educational programs that really add up. Also recently, there were additions to pay for K through 12 private education up to a certain annual limit. And there's even an allowance to be able to pay, uh, pay back student loans, right? Both for the beneficiary of the account as well as the beneficiary's siblings in certain cases and up to a certain amount. And I also think too, there's become more of a recognition that 529s are for more than just saving for higher education, for that traditional four-year higher education. Um, and I think some of that comes down to the fact that earnings in a 529 savings plan, they're free from federal income tax and generally not subject to state tax if withdrawals are used to pay those qualified education expenses. And with taxes, just being a, a concern that we see in the headlines, one of those third rails from a policy perspective, it's all over the place. I think 529s are one of those things that's taking center stage because of the tax benefits or the tax advantage savings they provide. You mentioned four-year colleges. Uh, I, I'm, I'm aware that four-year college applications have actually been on the decline, and perhaps that's because more people are going into vocational or trade programs that you mentioned. Why do you believe that a 529 like College America is still appealing to investors? Even with reports of this shift in applications to vocational and trade schools, our College America team has been seeing an increased demand for 529s. There's growing interest from the dealer firms that we work with to keep advisors really on the pulse of client engagement, which includes talking to them about having a holistic look at how they're planning, both for retirement and education. Those two are often discussed in conjunction with one another because they're two topics that are top of mind for a very key demographic for financial advisors. And that need for higher education in whatever form it may be, isn't going to go away. So it's really important for advisors to take the opportunity to help clients be proactive in saving for what is critical to the investor's long-term success. Right? The sooner they open accounts, the more time they'll have to reap the benefits 
of compounding in a tax advantaged account like a 529. Um, and you know that's how I've been talking a lot about them lately is that the sooner you can do it, the better, no matter the context or the outside environment. And we really think, and this is one of our key tenets here at Capital, that it's hugely important for investors to work with an advisor to make their financial decisions. And one of those is to determine how their 529 funds can be used. And even before that, the decision of whether and when to open a 529 savings plans. There are a lot of investors that aren't aware of 529s or all of the various things that a 529 can help pay for, particularly outside of that traditional four-year college degree. And advisors have a really important role to play in helping educate these clients and inform them about the expanded use for these 529 funds. What you say um, speaks to some of the barriers that advisors and investors face when it comes to opening and using 529s. I read some research by Capital Group that I believe it did last year. It showed that investors are quite concerned about withdrawal penalties, among other issues. How does working with an advisor help investors better understand and use these savings accounts? So, the research you cite from last year. It found that factors such as a general lack of knowledge about how 529s work, right, the inability to fund accounts, and like you said, withdrawal penalties are the top barriers perceived by clients to opening a 529. So not real barriers, but with the perception, which is really important. And that's why Capital Group believes it's so important for investors to work with an advisor who can dispel the myths and misperceptions around 529s and realize actually those barriers aren't insurmountable with some thoughtful and deliberate planning. So as an example, you can open a College America savings account with as little as $250. We said that earlier. And even if you can't contribute much to it, through the year or every year, having something is still better than nothing. And don't forget the power of compounding interest. If you open an account like that early on, right, that tax-free compounding interest, many years before you plan to draw down those funds, right? A little bit of money over 18, 20 years can turn into a lot of money. An advisor can really show their value in reminding clients about this, right? Unless you're in the weeds on that sort of topic all the time, we forget about it. And that's where advisors can be really helpful in reminding clients about the importance of some of these things. And advisors can also show and speak to the longer term benefits connected to contributing to 529s like College America and how it's such a critical component of that big picture, holistic, long-term financial planning that affects other investment priorities, like saving for retirement. I said earlier, the retirement and education savings plans, right, those can are often talked about in conjunction with one another. And our research found that investors underestimate the correlation between retirement readiness and education savings. So when those two goals are competing for funds, especially during periods of inflation like we're in now, more than three quarters of advisors say it can jeopardize disposable income and saving for retirement. So two really important subjects that need to be talked about together. So you're an expert on tax policy. Let's talk about Secure 2.0. What were the new opportunities that came about through that legislation that appealed to families and 529 beneficiaries. So 39% of advisors surveyed cited withdrawal penalties as a barrier to clients opening and contributing to a 529. But with the passing of Secure 2.0, investors have more flexibility, another tool in their toolbox with how and when to use the dollars that they've accrued in their 529. This new provision allows 529s right, to be rolled over up to a certain amount into a Roth IRA. So 
what it does is this new provision in 529s, it alleviates fears about having to pay taxes and penalties to access those leftover assets in 529 accounts, right? Beneficiaries of those accounts can roll over up to $35,000 to a Roth IRA tax and penalty free over their lifetimes. Now, there's a lot of limitations around that. One of them is that the account has to be in existence for 15 years prior to the rollover. The funds that are rollover have to have been in the account for a certain period of time. But it does provide another exit plan for those excess 529 funds. And $35,000 doesn't seem like a ton of money or a lot to roll over into a Roth, but Think about what happens to $35,000 if it's done in your 20s, right? And what that could become by the time you're in retirement. That's some serious money. And one of the lesser known benefits is that anyone of any age can be the beneficiary of a 529, right? Somebody can set up, an adult can set up a 529 for themselves. So clients can themselves be the beneficiaries of their account to fund their own future education or begin saving for future children. So, you know, it this addition from Secure 2.0 of this ability to roll over excess funds from 529s to Roths, right? It's not a paradigm shifting change, but as I said earlier, it's another tool in the toolbox. I've been framing it as a way for advisors to help clients feel better about funding 529s earlier and with more funds. Let's pause for a couple of minutes for a word from our sponsor. I know that you already enjoy our content from advisor perspectives every day. So why not use our award-winning articles, commentaries, and charts to streamline your communications with clients and prospects? My team and I introduced AP Premium last summer, and we've been blown away by the response from the advisor community. Keep listening for an exclusive code to get $10 off our premium service. You won't find the in-depth, sophisticated market analysis and charts like advisor perspectives anywhere else. This information can be invaluable to help your clients understand complex topics. Let's say a client asks a question about their estate plan. Instead of spending time researching and drafting a long-winded response, Quickly grab any number of related articles from our library and share it in a personalized way. AP Premium gives you the power to add your logo and a personalized message to any piece of content and share it directly with your clients and prospects. We also introduced a premium offering called the Ask an Expert webinar series. At our inaugural session, we were joined by Wade Fowle for an intimate Q&A. Advisors have told me this is one of their favorite perks of being a premium member, and we can't wait to share who's slated to join us next. Give premium a try and see for yourself why it pays to be a premium member. As always, we appreciate your support of our efforts to bring excellence to financial journalism. And as a thank you, I'm offering a one-time $10 discount for new premium members to be taken off your first monthly or annual payment. Just go to advisorsperspectives.com forward slash member. That's advisorperspectives.com forward slash member and use the code podcast 2022. That's podcast 2022, all caps at checkout. And now back to our podcast. Leslie, aside from the tax-free distributions that you mentioned for qualified expenses, are there other benefits of 529s that might be not as well known or obvious or other ways that advisors and their clients should be thinking about 529 in terms of the holistic and and overall financial and wealth planning that, that you've mentioned? I definitely encourage advisors to think about 529s as much more than just a means of paying for higher education. So first of all, I've found that 529s are a great way to start 
the planning conversation and the planning activity with clients that haven't done any planning before, right? I always encourage advisors to start small and specific with people who haven't done gifting, who haven't thought about this type of long-term planning. Starting with 529s pulls in the things they care about, education, their kids, and it's simple, right? So thinking about 529s as a way to kind of start that conversation to build that engagement and relationship with the client. It's almost a little bit of a practice management tool. Um, the second way, and I do a lot of talking about this, is 529s can really be thought of as one of the tools in the toolbox when it comes to an investor's overall tax, wealth, and estate plan. So 529s, as we've talked about, provide that tax deferred growth, tax-free growth, if you use the funds for education expenses, right? There's also a big wealth transfer benefit. If you set up a 529 for somebody other than yourself, who's a beneficiary, you move those, you move your funds into that 529, right? That is a completed gift. You have gotten those funds plus whatever they grow to out of your future taxable estate but at the same time, you can retain control over those funds. You can retain control over who is the beneficiary of that account, the distributions from that account as the owner. So it's one of those have your cake and eat it too wealth transfer strategies. And so they're so compelling from an estate and tax planning perspective because they're just so simple. You're not setting up a trust right? You're not having to go over these big distribution schemes and consider successor trustee plans. It's setting up the account and funding it. And for grandparents, especially who have multiple kids and grandchildren, thinking about setting up in 520s at setting up and funding 529s, even for adult children and grandchildren is an important part of that wealth transfer conversation because it's simple, as I said, and it checks the box both from an income tax perspective, right? You get that income tax deferred growth and a wealth transfer perspective. And there's a common misconception, Bob, that from a lot of advisors, even sophisticated ones, that you can only fund 529s with the annual exclusion gift. So that's 17,000 per person per year. And at most, you can do that five-year front-loading of annual exclusion gifts. That is not the case. You can fund 529s up to the plan maximum. So our College America plan maximum is $550,000 currently. And so you can fund each 529 with up to $550,000. You would just have to use some of your lifetime exemption amount, which is almost 13 million per person currently, to top up that $550,000 after you've used up your annual exclusion gifts. But annual exclusion gifts are not the only way to fund 529s, which allows people to fund a lot more if they are able to, if that makes sense to them from a planning perspective. So thinking of 529s as another tax and estate planning tool, not just for higher education, I think is really important, particularly for those higher net worth clients, clients with multi-generational wealth. Well, I am a grandparent. I have funded my grandchildren's education through 529 plans. I believe there's also a one-time uh, a contribution that you can make of like $100,000 if you're a grandparent. Uh, but I'm curious, with three daughters, have you uh, set up 529 plans for them? Absolutely. We set up 529s for each of them when they were born. What opportunities can offering 529 services create for advisors and their practices in the long term? When you consider advisors, the barriers to using them, why is it worth using a 529 in a practice? So going back to our study, advisors should consider adding 529s to their offerings and as something they're talking about with clients as a tool to strengthen their practice and as a bridge across generations. So a way to broaden their relationships across generations. About 93% of advisors said that it is important to build a multi-generational practice. 
but only 60% believe 529 plans offer the opportunity to achieve this. And from my personal experience in speaking with advisors of all types of practices, 529s is one of the best and easiest ways to bridge that generational gap and to start that conversation across the generations. Um, money and how it's managed plays a major role in the trajectory of an investor's life. And so understanding a client's relationship to money and helping them build financial literacy around savings account like 529s can really help with client retention in the long term while also creating that connection to their next generation. And I alluded to this earlier, but I love to encourage advisors to, particularly with families, even sophisticated ones who haven't done much planning, to, to start small and start specific and find the thing that matters to them. And using 529s as that hook is great because, as I said earlier, it's simple and it also brings up those things or brings to the surface those things that matter to a lot of people, right? So education, grandchildren, all of those things that are likely to get them to move, to sign the documents, to fund the accounts, which then just leads to more activity. So I love 529s as a gateway planning strategy. It's, we're recording today on May 31st. It's graduation season. Many investors and their kids are thinking about the next steps as their graduates begin their careers. If there's one key takeaway that you would like to leave with our audience of advisors about why now is the right moment for advisors to be speaking to their clients about 529s and what they should focus on, what would that be? Any time is a great time to set up a 529, but right now with, as you said, it's graduation season, people are thinking about those natural life transitions, um, it's an even better time. And that's amplified, I think, by the context of the current economic environment we're living in, right? Markets are a little wonky, right? The economy is unsettled to some degree. Nobody knows what the future holds. Um, taxes, we don't have the big threat of increased taxes, but taxes are already pretty high, particularly if you live in a high tax state. So are all these contextual factors as well that make 529s a really relevant planning strategy, particularly for families that are concerned about funding educational expenses. And if there was one takeaway, I would focus on the earlier is better, right? This idea of what I threw out earlier that all of these contextual factors, the expanded uses for 529s, the new secure 2.0 rollover provision, all are reasons to help advisors guide clients to funding more in 529s and funding sooner. And there really shouldn't be a downside. And there are so many planning opportunities from a wealth transfer perspective, from an income tax perspective, from a family legacy perspective. So they're a win-win-win in from all types of angles, particularly in the current environment that we're living in. Well, that is the approach that I've taken with my grandchildren to fund more and to do it sooner. So we'll include some links in the notes that accompany this podcast with some more information about Capital Group and its 529 offerings. There'll be a link to information about the College America 529 Savings Plan. There'll be a link to the research that Leslie mentioned, which is titled Benefits and Barriers, How Advisors and Clients View Education Savings in the Current Market. And I'll also put a link in there to the podcast that I did with Leslie previously, the questions to ask your female clients. Leslie, is there anything else you'd like to add? No, I think the earlier and more funding and not thinking about 529s as just for that traditional four-year higher education. Wonderful. Well, thank you for listening to the Gaining Perspective podcast with Bob Hoopsher, today featuring Leslie Geller of Capital Group. To support our podcast, please Share, subscribe, or leave a review to help make our podcast more findable for your friends and colleagues. You can subscribe to Gaining Perspective on iTunes, Spotify, and Stitcher. 